Hey, hey, I'm Uncle Steph. Welcome to the video. So we're going to talk about nerds versus suits and what nerds should do to advance in their career. So a nerd, of course, is the software developer, the programmer, the nerd. I'm a nerd. Number two, what's a suit? A suit is management. The non-nerds in the business, the salespeople, uh, middle management, the CEO, the VPs, depending on the size of the company, those are the suits. So, there has always been a, a tenuous relationship between the nerds and the suits in traditional uh, business. Going back to the 90s when the nerds really were in full ascension, when they started becoming super valuable, uh, the suits had to deal with the uh, sometimes less than hospitable disposition of the nerds. Now, nerds got away with it, and they still do to a large extent, because there's such a demand for good programmers these days that even if you are uh, not, shall we say, as, um, as easy to get along with as other people, you can still get away with it to a certain extent, although these days it's getting a little bit more rough. It's in your best interest as a software developer slash nerd to uh, improve your interpersonal skills. I was reading a piece recently, piece being an article, I was reading an article recently where they were interviewing you know, heads of tech companies uh, and they said one of the biggest challenges, the number two challenge in terms of hiring good people, uh, good programmers, was interpersonal skills and abilities. Because if you're working at a business if you're freelancing, whatever, you're going to be talking and dealing with other people, with other programmers, with the suits, with clients, etc., depending. So you have to have good interpersonal skills. So again, because good software developers are in the high demand, uh, suits generally don't want to anger the nerds because they don't want to lose good developers. And sometimes nerds, uh, they've abused this a little bit, historically speaking. So here's some advice. If you are a developer or getting into the game, if you can show and demonstrate a little self-control in terms of uh, how you conduct yourself with other people, uh, then you will enter the realm of the highly prized master nerds because it's like one of my mentors told me one long time ago. He said he'd rather have a reasonably competent person working for him that was easy to get along with than a genius who was an I don't know if that's a swear word in today's uh, YouTube world, I'm not sure. Anyway, you don't wanna be a jerk, don't be a jerk. If you are a developer and you want to advance in your career, if you can spend a little bit of time, first, working on your interpersonal skills, second, learning to speak the language of the suits, meaning understanding a little bit of the business end and considerations of things, your value of a developer will also skyrocket as well. You have to remember when choosing technologies, when making technology decisions, often enough, the technology isn't the only factor, isn't the only variable in the decision-making process. There are also business considerations. What is the current infrastructure? Uh, what is out there in terms of competition? Uh, speed of development? Cost of maintaining infrastructure? You have to think from the point of view of the business. So you may say to yourself, yeah, I want to use this obscure technology here because I like the syntax better, or it's complex, so it will kind of lock me in. That's not the way you should think. You should always think about how the technology choices you recommend, how they benefit the business in the long term. If you do that, your value as a developer will skyrocket. That's my two cents. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Thumbnails. We're doing thumbnails. Pretty good.